If I had to pick one, if you put me on gunpoint and ask me, hey, have to pick one, that's it, then I think I will go with Egypt because of not being on the FATF gray list. Cairo airport having the same similar connectivity to the Istanbul airport. So that makes sense. People speak better English as compared to Turkey. And that's my personal opinion, my personal experience. Maybe someone has experienced something different. So I, I give Egypt the edge over there. 300k in property investment is less than the 400k of Turkey. So in that sense, there's advantage there. All right. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the two Muslim citizenship options at a similar price point i'm not going to discuss jordan it's going to be a comparison between egypt and turkey and the reason why i'm comparing these two are because these are the only two cbi muslim cbi options available a lot of people don't find the caribbean the five caribbean passports or citizenship so whatever you may call it right those options are non-options for a lot of people because they don't like the citizenships or passports be controlled by external entities, not direct control, but indirectly watching and, you know, controlling the way these programs are behaving. A lot of people don't prefer that. They want something true, something of like a real country. I'm not saying that the Caribbean nations aren't real nations, but they're just the CBI program, right? Got to have a robust, serious, real program in place. Now, Turkey has a serious legal program, right? It's not controlled by the US or any other Western country. It's directly controlled by Aragon and his country. So that's at 400K in property investment. A lot of people find that as the best option. I personally feel the 500K in bank. People talk about property and they promote the property because how that's how people would make money, right? The marketers and the property sellers and the developers and all those people will make money by charging you for property uh, purchase, right? Uh, sales. Eventually, you have to sell that off, dispose your assets. You got to take a hit over there. And then if you make some profit, then you got to worry about extracting those monies from that property into the bank, into your home country, etc. I find the 500K bank deposit a better option because, again, you are keeping liquid assets, getting almost a free citizenship in, in return for keeping your assets. And then eventually you're looking at it's it's easier path where you don't have to sell anything. Egypt, on the other side, has a very similar layout. After the reduction, they're talking about 300K in property investment, right? The new capital. It's an interesting area. I think it has a good financial outlook, right? In future, it might appraise. Who knows? This is not investment advice, but I find that as a better deal as compared to, let's say, trying to make money investing in Turkey. So 300K USD is not very bad. Uh, on the other side, uh, the bank deposit is a similar option, 500K. So you're comparing apples to apples, right? Over here, you're in Turkey, 500K in the bank, Egypt, 500K in the bank. So it's kind of a similar deal in those cases. Regarding the better property investment, I feel personally, I think the Egyptian property investment could be a better deal as compared to the Turkish property investment. The big disadvantage with Turkey is that it's on the FATF gray list. So let's say you're not from a country on the FATF gray list, you're trying to move monies into Turkey. At the banks, you might have additional questions, scrutiny and all those kind of things, right? It's known for certain financial situations. So if you want to play with fire, if you like taking risks and playing with fire, then that's an option for you. So I don't like the fact that Turkey is on the FATF gray list. Even Dubai has entered the FATF gray list. A lot of people are uncomfortable with that categorization, right? You, want, you don't want to be participating in something like that. You want to stay away from something like that. It takes away from your plan B. Plan B is clean and neat and nice. So you want, you know, clean stuff in your portfolio. You don't want to, you don't want to accumulate shady stuff <laughs> when you're talking about plan B. The other big factor over here is the English factor. Now, as a foreigner, I want to have at least, you know, people to understand some basic level of English. Turkey, I feel, especially, you know, if you're in Istanbul, that's closer to the airport. That's where you would want to live. A lot of people try to make case where, hey, don't live in Istanbul. There are other beautiful places. But what's the point? They're beautiful. You're going to set up your life over there. You've got to travel there. Right? So if you're catching a train or a bus or a car or whatever, a cab, from the Istanbul airport and you're going to any other place, it'll take you hours and hours and hours. And in that kind of overwhelming, crazy, chaotic traffic, 
talking about uh, you know it really it isn't going to be a practical solution so the most practical option is to stay as close as possible to the istanbul airport the fact that it's so overwhelmingly crowded is way too chaotic for a lot of people a lot of people want a slightly quieter environment when they're landing into a new country you anyways had a long flight you had a tiring day and the last thing you want is to face the overwhelming craziness of the whole istanbul city let's talk about english right english speaking abilities I personally feel from personal experience I think people in Egypt speak English slightly better as compared to people in Turkey in Turkey you have a lot of influx of immigrants from various places especially a lot of people from Pakistan have applied for the Turkish CBI program apart from just the citizenship program uh, before uh, the threshold was less than 75k for property investment so a lot of people a lot of asian people have entered a lot of asylees refugees and those kind of people also in turkey you don't find much of that in egypt and everyone talks about the istanbul airport having the best connectivity yes it is known for its connectivity but don't forget the cairo airport cairo international it ha also has a lot of flights in and out of that airport so that also is an interesting decent airport with a bunch of connectivity to different important hubs regarding the access yes the turkish passport has more access but what are you going to do with that access are you really buying this for travel let's say someone from pakistan or uh, you know an asian country who comes with a very poor passport for them yes access and travel uh, privileges could be fine that could be an option could be an advantage but if you're from a western country let's say you're from the US as Canada, Australia, access is least of your worries. Looking for a diversified plan B option. So in that sense, if you compare the access, yes, Turkish on paper is stronger than the Egyptian passport. But if you're looking at Egypt as a base, right, for your plan B, then Egypt kind of makes more sense as compared to the overwhelming Turkey. Again, you're not going for tourism, so you're not going to enjoy the beauty. You're just going to go, you know, rest a while, be private, be left alone, and then you're out. Now, do I like either of these two options? No, I don't like either of these two options. They're not great options. They are what they are. That That is what is available, right? If Jordan is not affordable to you, then these are the only two options that are available. Are they great? No, they're not great. I personally don't like either of these two options. But if I had to pick one, if you put me on gunpoint and ask me, hey, have to pick one, that's it then I think I will go with Egypt because of not being on the FATF grey list. Cairo airport having the same similar connectivity to the Istanbul airport. So that makes sense. People speak better English as compared to Turkey. And that's my personal opinion, my personal experience. Maybe someone has experienced something different. So I, I give Egypt the edge over there. 300k in property investment is less than the 400k of Turkey. So in that sense, there's advantage there. Uh, getting more financial returns from Egypt could be possible as compared to Turkey. Turkey, uh, I don't know in today's day and age, it's way too inflated. The program has been overblown. Prices, the property prices have gone out of the roof. So in that sense, I give Egypt the edge over there. So if I had to pick one of the two, then I will go with Egypt. If Turkey is lifted from the FADF gray list, then situation might change. But for now, I think Egypt for me makes a lot more sense. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Which one would you pick from Turkey or Egypt? And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to turn on the bell notification and subscribe so you don't miss out on any important analysis, news breaks, and a whole lot more. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subbed and catch you in the next one.